Happy Tuesday in the truly fantastic City Hall of Northampton, right in the center of Massachusetts, the heartbeat of this great state. My name is Matt Boger. I have the great privilege, along with Jen Cray, the Director of Volunteer Services, representing New England Donor Services. We are the federally designated organiz organization responsible for the identification and transplantation of organs and tissues throughout Massachusetts and throughout New England. It is our great pleasure to be here with the mayor, with the representative, with the hardworking RMV, and in extensia, the Massachusetts De uh, Department of Public Health supporting organ donation. We want to share that the state plays, the state as in Massachusetts, the state as in all states in the country, play a significant role in the organ donation process in that 98% of all people who register do so through the RMV here in Massachusetts or DMV throughout the country. Organ donation is a voluntary choice. That being said, it's not a neutral choice. Both the state and federal government strongly supports organ donation and presents it on a state document that's seen by the vast majority of the American public who is getting their ID, real ID, or driver's license. And the state does a wonderful job. I want to thank Jay and his wonderful team for what they do each and every day. We're here to listen to the stories of people personally touched by organ donation, both lives shared and those who lost loved ones but realized that their loved one gave the gift, the gift of life. I do want to make sure that it is clear our organization, our motto is donate life. We don't want anyone to pass away, period. Having someone die to save someone else's life is a zero-sum game. That being said, sadly, people do pass, and the opportunity for have, to have their legacy continue on through someone else, through the miracle I call of organ donation, is truly the uh, definition of humanity. One individual can save up to eight lives through organs that can be transplanted. Heart, lung, liver, pancreas, kidney, these are things that can give life. And again, organ donation only comes about after someone has passed away. We don't want anyone to pass away, but the idea of continuing on through someone else is truly a wonderful thing. And I will say, in Massachusetts, we have not some of the best, we have the best hospitals and medical care in the entire universe. Mayor, I know that you've got a busy schedule, including a vote for uh, doing great things in your uh, city. Thanks so much for being here to be part of this event and to, to sharing April as uh, Donut Life Month here in this uh, great city. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Matt. That was an amazing introduction you gave to this really important um, day in recognition. And um, this is something that's very close to my heart, something that I believe in organ donation very deeply. I have been a registered organ donor since I very first could be able to. And um, now in three states, I have been an organ donor. Um, and of course, Massachusetts being the best state of all. Um, so thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all that you give. Um, and it is my absolute privilege to recognize Donate Life Month. Um, April 2024, whereas there are more than 103,700 Americans with more than 6,000 in New England waiting for a life-saving organ transplant. And whereas there are over 1 million life-enhancing tissue transplants each year that are made possible by the generous donation of corneas, bone, skin, or other tissue. And whereas we can all help to save someone's life and benefit up to 50 recipients by signing up to become an organ and tissue donor. We can sign up by enrolling in the Massachusetts Donor Registry when we apply for or renew our driver's licenses, or by registering online at mass.gov slash organ donor or registerme.org. And whereas 98% of all people in Massachusetts who register to become a donor do so at the Registry of Motor Vehicles. Massachusetts surpasses the national goal of signing up 50% of our driving population to become donors and is dedicated to making it fast and easy to sign up to save a life through the Registry of Motor Vehicles. And whereas this observance pays tribute to organ and tissue donors and their families whose decision to donate life enables others to receive life-saving organs and tissues for transplant. And so now, therefore I, Gina Lee Shara, Mayor of Northampton, do hereby proclaim April 2024 as Donate Life Month and encourage residents to register as organ donors 
and potentially save a life. In witness where I've, I've set my hand and printed the seal of the city of Northampton on this 23rd day of April, 2024. Thank you. That's wonderful. It's all about the heart, too. Uh, and thank you for registering in three different states. Yeah. And hopefully you won't need to register anymore because you're here in uh, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah, yeah. That being said, it doesn't need to be clear. And I appreciate the wonderful work that the RMV does each and every day. Each time you have to say yes. Again, it's a voluntary choice, but it's not a neutral choice. We have seen that people are like, I'm already registered. You don't need to register again. Uh, we encourage people every time they engage with that question to check the yes box. Mayor, you are in good company. Our wonderful governor has proclaimed April as Donate Life uh, Month in Massachusetts. And President Biden earlier this month also proclaimed April as Organ Donation Month in the United States to bring attention to that. I do want to make sure that it is clear that organ donation is very, very rare. The idea of getting in the heart on your license, I, I want to make sure that we understand. The idea of being a hero is the idea of registering. You're more likely to need a transplant than to become an organ donor. Only 5% of all deaths happen in a manner where one can become an organ donor. A lot of people, I'm, I'm going to age myself, have watched ER. I don't think that's on anymore. It's, what, it's Grey's Anatomy now. That might not still be around. It's still on. Still on. Um, so I'm always amazed how much medical information people get from sources like that, uh, which are wonderful entertainment venues, but perhaps not the best way to get uh, medical uh, care. Police, fire, EMT, doctors in the emergency room, only job period is to save your life. They have no say in the organ donation process, no matter what TV shows say. Organ donation is a very well thought out, trusted system. You cannot go into a, uh, in a hospital and say, can you put this organ into me? We as the uh, federally designated organ procurement organization are the only ones who can identify an individual and verify that they are a donor. If an individual is not a donor, we have conversations with family members to see if they could approve that. And during a tough time in someone's life, usually organ donation comes uh, upon an accident and you're not ready for it. And to have a parent or a loved one have that decision is very emotional. And uh, they, to a T, have told me that during the toughest time of my life, I had to make that decision. But a day, a week, a month later, I'm so glad I did because the, my loved one's legacy continues on through someone else. Um, Representative, I'm happy to have you say a few words. Sure. Or, yeah, thank you so much for what you do at the state level. We work extremely closely with you. We don't need any line <laughs> item budgets, but we're there to support advocacy on organ donation, make sure the system is, uh, is clear. So thank you so much for your yeah. wonderful time. I think this is the first time this week that someone has not asked me for money, uh, so I appreciate not, that. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is where you come in. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. I'm really grateful to join the mayor uh, and the governor in recognizing this important month. So I wanted to share very recently, I have a licensed driver in my house, which yeah. is a little terrifying, but we had to have a conversation about organ donation because she had to make that decision about whether that little heart was going on her license, which I'm happy to say that she did. But it was, um, it was really powerful to have that opportunity to kind of sit down and say, what does this mean? Like, it's easy to check a box. It's much harder to really talk to your child about what happens if you're in an accident and do you want to make sure that your organs go to saving other people's lives. So I think those conversations, while hard, are really, really important. Uh, something I wanted to flag, because while I think those the heart and the license is amazing, I was also told, make sure you put it in your medical directive, because it's not enough to just have it on your license. Your family needs to know that that is really, truly your wish if something happens to you. So we sat down with our attorneys, we got our paperwork in order, and we certainly hope that nothing bad happens, but I know personally I want to see my organs, whatever is possible, go forward and help other people if something were to happen. So I'm very grateful for today. I'm grateful for this work. Thank you for not asking me for a line item. Uh, and um, I'm really just delighted to celebrate with you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Representative, I, I've got to say, when, when um, I, I let you know that the mayor was hosting this event, almost right away you said, I'd be happy to attend. <laughs> so thank you so much for bringing attention to this important thing. We are not asking for money. We are asking for donation. 
And we are different than any other organization in two specific ways. Important medical issues. So cancer, AIDS research, all very important, but we stand alone in two different uh, significant ways. A, we're not looking for a cure. We know what that cure is, is to honor someone else's wishes and save someone else's life. We are asking for a donation, and that donation is just registering as a donor, not a financial contributor, but providing the opportunity of hope, of life. That heart means that you have a heart and you could give to someone else. Again, organ donation is very, very rare. It does not happen often and we've also been uh, given the thing if if you if you, were, if you need an organ would you accept one you need to be part of the, a bigger community to, to support that Massachusetts is a wonderful leader unfortunately we have just uh, gotten under 50 percent of the population registered and we're working real hard to help educate individuals answer those questions in fact in Springfield we have a big billboard Massachusetts Department of Public Health has done a wonderful job and I do want to reflect on the wonderful campaign banners that they have created you can register at the RMV every five years or if you want to go on right now you can go to massgov backslash organ donor MassGov backslash organ donor. Massachusetts Department of Public Health has been strongly supportive of this and has a campaign to help educate people about this, address myths and misconceptions. One of the myths and misconceptions that I hear a lot is that I am too old to register as an organ donor. Registering as an organ donor is not a health care decision. It is saying that if I have viability to donate, there could be an opportunity to, uh, to do that. So people who are 60, 70, 80, and yes, even 90, you can register as an organ donor. In fact, just a several weeks ago, we had a kidney donor who was in their late 80s to save someone else's life. This is important because there is right now, as the mayor said, over 103,000 people in the United States waiting for a life-saving organ. In New England, that's over 6,000 individuals waiting for that call that their lives could be saved because of that. The data shows that about 17 people die each day from the waiting list. The waiting list is enormous. In fact, the majority of people who are waiting are waiting for a kidney here in Massachusetts and throughout the country. In fact, 80% of all people who are waiting are waiting for a kidney. And we want to create that idea of hope to share that opportunity to do so. Um, one of the most important players in this, whether they like it or not, Massachusetts, they actually do like it, is the RMV because they see the public come through. And again, we are the only public health question presented on a state document that's seen by individuals. It provides an opportunity to focus on that question and to register. Again, you can say yes or you don't have to. That being said, it's not a neutral choice. And we encourage people to say yes. Jay, thank you so much for your wonderful leadership here in Massachusetts and throughout, uh, throughout this wonderful state, which you go from coast to coast. And again, we are midway here. I know you go further north and you go further south, you go east and west, but you've been a great advocate. And thank you so much for what you do here. Appreciate that. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Thanks, Representative. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for hosting. This is a great opportunity to be here. I'm always honored um, to be at these uh, ceremonies and I know Registrar Ogilvy, this is a very important partnership to her and to my team in the registry. Uh, just two weeks ago, we had Donate Life Day, and across the state, we had balloons and people dressing up. Phil, and Phil who's my East uh, Hampton and Greenfield manager, is wearing the blue tie. I'm wearing the green tie. <laughs> True story, was not planned. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's great because we have so much energy around this, and we just try and keep up with Matt's energy, which is no small task. But the passion of the partner makes it a lot easier. We ask that question, do you want to be an organ donor with every single licensed customer that comes in? We fell under 50. We're going to do what we can to get it to 60. That's our, um, our goal. One thing that I want to say to Matt is we've done these for four years now, you and I, and probably dozens. And I always sit here and I say, those who donated, they're the, they're the, um, the heroes. I stand behind, beside you today, Matt. Last month, my brother-in-law passed away. And when I walked into my mother-in-law's house that morning, guess who she was on the phone with? Mm -hmm. New England um, Donate Life. Because my brother-in-law was a donor. Mm -hmm. And he donated his cornea that very day. Mm -hmm. So now, as I've always said, it's personal. Now it's really personal to my family and I. To the point that now we got six more donations because of my brother-in-law. So 
Thank you for all the work you do. Thank you for the support across the state. And remember, when you go into the registry, check yes and donate two bucks because that's the other question on there. So, you know, we'll ask for the money this time. But thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jay, thank you for uh, sharing that story and your brother-in-law's legacy continues on through sight. Yep. Someone else can see because of that. And again, we, uh, we have a great aftercare program of over uh, 10 people who work with all the hospitals and family members who are grieving and make them realize that, that le again, the term legacy is meaningful of what it can truly do. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Sorry for your loss, but um, thank you on behalf of the person who received that. We do appreciate that. Um, this is all precursor to the people who are truly affected by organ donation. Um, we have individuals who have been touched by organ donation to share their stories and to thank their, their donors. Um, uh, Hal has come with me all over the place to share these wonderful stories. I'd love to have you do that as well. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hal Etkin. On uh, February uh, uh, 15th of 2016, I was lucky enough to get a heart transplant. And uh, I want to, at least this point, to thank some of my local doctors who kept me alive so I could get a heart transplant. That was uh, Dr. Moore Slosky and Dr. Gregory Valenia from Bay State. Uh, uh, we lucky to live in a country that has such wonderful care. Uh, but what we're here really to speak about today is uh, organ uh, donation, and uh, um, I'm happy to do it in Northampton. Northampton's uh, the, probably uh, the, one of the jewels of uh, Western Mass. Uh, a lot of people from first night, I'm here every year <laughs> celebrating. Have you been to first night, Matt? Not, not yet. Uh, not you've got to come. Yet. There's something for the kids in the, in, the, uh, in the morning, in the daytime, and then uh, it's for the adults at night. But well, also a lot of people don't know, uh, you know, we have uh, the Presidential Museum here. Calvin Coolidge Presidential Museum. And Calvin started as a mayor, city council, and yeah. maybe we have the next president here. Or maybe from the state legislature. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, prior to getting my heart transplant, you know, I was a very, very busy guy. After graduating from law school, I worked 10 years in the district attorney's office where I specialized in prosecuting uh, people who hurt women and children. Then I did another 10 years uh, uh, working at the local police department where I signed the diplomas of your past chief of police, Jody Casper, and your present chief of police, uh, uh, Chief uh, John Cartledge. So, uh, and then 10 years after that, I worked in the, uh, as a private attorney. So I was used to being busy. And then uh, during a uh, run at the police academy when I was 38, I couldn't keep up anymore. In fact, the state police sergeant who worked for me uh, said, how if we were going any slower, we would have been walking. So I knew I was in trouble and I had to you know, see the doctors and I found out that I needed a transplant. Now, fortunately for me, there was a, a gentleman who made a decision named uh, Jack Tien. Uh, whose picture is here. As you can see, he's a handsome young man. He was from Plymouth. He loved animals. Uh, he had a great life. But he decided one day that I want to do something special. I want to make a difference in the world. And that's what donation is about, making the difference. I believe that people want to help other people. And we want to do something very special. And this is one way to do that. Because when you decide to make a donation, you're making a gift that is going to save someone's life. And Jack did all of his organs, uh, his uh, corneas, uh, his heart, his lungs, his kidneys. He affected a lot of people. And I think that when it comes time to you know, meet our maker, he or she, uh, they're going to say, what did you do on earth? And you can look and say, I did something special. And whether it in fact turns into a donation or not, you made it possible for something to occur. And that's a very, very wonderful thing to do. Now, the other benefit that has occurred is I have become very close to Jack's family. Uh, we have been to dinner together. I brought him to the Big E. 
He loves the Big E. I'm going to visit him in Plymouth. We're going on vacation this summer down to Provincetown. So it's also an opportunity to make a human connection uh, with a people that you didn't think you would ever meet. And that's another benefit of organ donation. Now, I started by speaking about Calvin Coolidge, and I'm going to end with Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge uh, was asked, he didn't run for, he was offered to run again, and his famous uh, saying was, I choose not to run. But I bet you if Calvin Coolidge was here today, and you asked him about organ donation, he would say, I choose to run to become an organ donor. <laughs> so let's be like Jack, and let's be like Calvin Coolidge, and become an organ donor. Thank you. like the presidential history right there, <laughs> Calvin Coolidge. My Calvin Coolidge story, uh, he was at a party and, they, and a woman said, I bet I can add, make you say then more than three words. And his response was, you lose. Yes. <laughs> so okay, it, it, this is a big event for Calvin Coolidge. Get, get a little bit better, up, uh, stronger reputation. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing that story. And again, if you were to see uh, Hal walk down the street, you'd have no idea that he had a significant surgery, heart transplant and to give credence to uh, the son here, um, Richard's son, who we became to know very well is meaningful. And again, the idea of family, what family means, what humanity means, it is connecting people. Um, I'm also here to share two more stories. Uh, we came across uh, Elizabeth because during the rare snowstorms in New England this year, she was out snowshoeing, <laughs> celebrating her, uh, her double lung uh, transplant. I, I hope I'm not taking your story, but really appreciate you coming and saying a few words. Absolutely. Good morning. Good morning. So thank you so much. Um, good morning, everyone. I, I just want to say I, I come here this morning from just a deep place of gratitude and appreciation. Um, I, in August, eight months ago this week, I was the recipient of a double lung transplant. Um, my world changed in 2017. I was diagnosed with breast cancer and that was treated, but I ended up with severe lung damage due to the cancer treatment. Um, never expected it and I became dependent in 2017 and 2018 on oxygen 24 seven. Um, I was active, I used to love to act, um, be, be active. And actually before I go on, I just want to um, take a minute and acknowledge and express my deep, deep gratitude and appreciation to my donor and their family. I reached out to my donor um, via New England Donor Services, and maybe someday I'll hear back, maybe I won't, but they're in, that person in their family is in my thoughts every day. Um, I used to love to be active, as I was saying. One of my favorite things to do was to snowshoe. Um, and also, my husband and I own kayaks, something very peaceful in the summertime about being out on a lake. I haven't been able to do that in about seven years. Um, I celebrated a birthday in February, six months after my uh, double lung transplant and was able to go snowshoeing. Um, I didn't become short of breath and I was out with my husband and my best friend and I just held the snowshoe poles high, looked up to the sky and, and just thanked my donor and let them know this is what they gave me. I had my life back. And my husband and I have plans to do a lot of waterfall hiking in the Berkshires like we used to love to do. And we're getting our kayaks out of the garage this summer for the first time in seven years. Because it was kind of hard to take a kayak out with an oxygen tank. So my life, because of a selfless donor, has, has changed. It, it's, it's become so enriched. Like being dependent on oxygen just really impaired the quality of my life. And I, I can't, I didn't have the word, it was hard to get the words to write to my donor's family. Um, what do you say? Um, it's such a gift, and I wanted to just pay it forward by volunteering with Jen and New England Donor Services and put my story out there and encourage people, maybe through my story, how much organ donation can change someone's life. Um, I'm another, I celebrated another birthday, I'm out and about again, I'm independent again, I was, I'm hoping to go back to work as a nurse, that all changed when I got sick. and. 
what I want to end with, I guess, is you know, encourage. I just want to get the word out there to um, encourage people to s become organ donors. It's really easy to register and just to show and let everybody know what a difference it can really make. And one thing I took away from being so severely sick was that live every moment, live every moment as it's your moment, because in reality, that's all we have is each moment. And hug your people, love your people, hug your trees, hug your pets. I came out of being so sick with such a deep appreciation of everyone and everything around me that it was almost worth being sick, because I felt like I took all that for granted before I got sick. Um, so I want to thank everybody for everything that they do and encourage everyone to um, how much of a difference organ, organ donation can make. Um, I'm a living example. Thank you. Elizabeth is living her life because of this, so thank you so much. It really is, uh, really is amazing. Um, and we have one more speaker who is a Northamptonian. Is that what you say? Northamptonian? Tenotonian? <laughs> I guess we're getting it right. Uh, born and bred here, uh, cares very deeply about this community and actually has helped fly a Donate Life flag in this community. But um, Bob, if you want to share your story briefly, we, we really sure. appreciate that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. and I think Bob Wood, and like uh, I was introduced, I spent my whole life, most of it here anyways, in Northampton. Him, as we call it. Um, 2016, Thanksgiving Eve. I got a phone call. Probably the most bittersweet phone call you could get. Some family in Pennsylvania lost a 42-year-old daughter, maybe a mother, maybe a sister. But her liver fit mine the space that I had. And when I woke up, <clears throat> Thanksgiving Day, I was good. But like I said, it, it's bittersweet. Um, I got a miracle, somebody else didn't. And as Elizabeth said, learning uh, to live, I hear people say, you only, die, you only live once. I say, you only die once, live every day. Thank you. Thank you, and, and it shows that these real life stories are uh, true and amazing. And as you point out, someone's worst day, losing a loved one, can be someone else's best day. Going back to the worst day, sadly that individual was going to pass away. And we're using that opportunity to help save another life and have that individual live on through someone else. So the idea, and um, Elizabeth, you kind of said it, you said it as well, it's kind of live every day, hug a tree, great, awesome. <laughs> hug whoever you can because life is valuable. Uh, and sometimes you take it for granted, you don't when you have to go through a transplantation. And for them to remind us how important it is and to show a little example of that support, we encourage you to say yes at the RMV and get your license. Uh, I want to thank the mayor who's extremely busy. I want to thank the representative for being so joyful and being here. Most importantly, I'd like to thank uh, individuals touched by donation and forever the RMV who will always play a significant role. And lastly, I want to thank the media. There's a phrase, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? It does if there's someone to capture it. This room, I think, is fairly touched about what's going on and how we can make a difference. People can take action here. You can register either online at register at uh, mass.gov backslash organ donor or go to the RMV. But you guys sharing it with the greater community is greatly appreciated. I do have to say, I think going to the RMV is one of the best things around. <laughs> the staff is wonderful and happy. Jay does not like me to say that. Jay says, you know what, go online. It can no be done. Way. No way, we love seeing But the there. RMV is a wonderful place. Um, but these are great events. Uh, April is Organ Donation Month as declared, uh, declared by the uh, mayor. Truly every day is Organ Donation Month. So thank you, it was wonderful to meet you. I've heard a great amount of wonderful things about you on the state house. You're doing wonderful things. So thanks everyone for being here, really appreciate that.